guys! Today I'm going to review Madhouse. Guaranteed to scare you out of your mind. No one ever leaves Madhouse. Madhouse came out in 1974. It's a British-American horror film. It was filmed in London. It's an amicus and an American international picture. It was directed by Jim Clark, written by Ken Leverson and Greg Morrison. It's based on the novel Devil Deer by Angus Hall from 1969. The film has an alternative title, The Revenge of Dr. Death. Music was by Douglas Gamley. The film runs 91 minutes. It didn't perform well at the box office. The film uses scenes from other American international pictures featuring Vincent Price. These are Tales of Terror, The Raven, The Haunted Palace, The Pit and the Pendulum, Scream and Scream Again and House of Usher. The film stars Vincent Price, Peter Cushion, Robert Quarry, Natasha Pine, Linda Hayden and Michael Parkinson playing himself. Also in the cast, Basil Rathbone and Boris Karloff are featured because they use clips from the films that they were in. So in this film, Vincent Price plays a movie star who makes horror films. So he's sort of playing himself. Vincent Price plays a movie star who suffers a mental breakdown after his fiancée's death and ends up in an asylum. Years later, he makes a comeback. However, he becomes a suspect after a string of murders. Is he doing the killings, or is someone else? So this film's all about the world of movies. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next few moments, you will be witnessing scenes from a new motion picture starring Vincent Price, master of the macabre. And it's ahead of its time, actually. It's very similar to a film called Scream in 1996, with film references and people who are familiar with films. And you see loads of clips from Vincent Price's earlier films in this. And it makes a nice double bill with Theater of Blood. Both of them films are great. Theater of Blood's about the theatre, of course. And Madhouse is about movies, so they're kind of similar. They make a great double bill to a Vincent Price's best films. So both Vincent Price and Peter Cushion are in the same film, and that, that's an unusual pairing. Usually it's Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee. I won't be giving away who the, the killer is in this film because it's kind of like a murder mystery. So there won't be any spoilers about the, the identity of the killer. Hey, Phil, I know who does the killings. It's Bones, man. Don't tell who the killer is. He'll spoil it. So Price is playing this actor who's not wanting to do horror films, but he's like forced into doing them again. It's almost like he's referring to himself in this film. And bizarrely enough, this is kind of like one of his last horror films that he did. He'd um, make one or two films afterwards that were horror films, like The Monster Club, in 1981 but this is kind of like the last of his major horror films and this film has a massive great cast Vincent Price is on top form in this film at first it's, it's a subtle type of performance but as he becomes more unhinged with all the murders that are happening around him <laughs> it's OTT Price again being at his hammiest come light Action! Now I must play the final scene. The death of Dr. Death. Right at the very beginning there's a massive shock where you see him kissing his wife's head and then her head falls off. She's been decapitated and he doesn't know. It, it, it's quite a, a, a shock effect. So it, it gets you into a, like a, a nervous mode throughout the film because that's right at the beginning. Peter Cushion's good as well because he, he, he has 
a subtle sinisterness to his performance. He plays the writer who's writing the Doctor Death films that Price stars in. And he's in quite a lot in this film as well. Robert Quarry's brilliant. He starred in the Count Yorga films that are excellent. I'll have to review them. And he's a, a right sleazy producer type in this. Yeah, hell, that Robert Quarry. He was a right bloody twat in this. Proper bloody shithouse. <laughs> he told Price that he's... Fiance gives the star in these blue movies. Hey, Phil, I wouldn't mind viewing the films. Yeah! It wasn't long after that she gets killed. Even Linda Hayden, she pops up and she's stunning in this film. She's been in quite a few horror films, actually, her. She plays the part of this girl who's trying to chase after Vincent Price's character for publicity reasons. There's lots of in-jokes as well. There's a party scene that's quite fun. Death is the name of the doctor you've met. Peter Cushing's uh, done up as Dracula. And Robert Quarry's dressed up as Dracula as well. And that's a little nod to his Count Yorga films that he just recently did. Another good thing is um, having Michael Parkinson playing himself a TV interviewer. And his name gets mentioned that it is Michael Parkinson. And this grounds the film in reality. You believe it's actually real, the, the, the film and the events that are happening. And he did the same in a production called Ghost Watch from 1992. He played Michael Parkinson himself. And that grounds that production as well in reality. And he's really good as well. He plays it straight. So I thought it was clever having him in because he was really popular at the time. The film has a lot of quite gory moments. The beheading scene at the beginning. Someone gets killed with a pick fork. A stabbing in the neck. So it's quite gruesome at times. And it has a great conclusion as well. And the film's very much like a, a Jalo film where you say the, the murderer with his black gloves on and a mask and a dark hat and it's really effective what makes this film so good is its references to films it's ahead of its time actually it is very much like scream in a way and i think it's one of price's best films it's up there with theater of blood house of usher pitting the pendulum and mask of the red death and i was surprised by the identity of the murderer as well i thought it was really clever so overall i thought it was an absolute classic and out of 10 i'm going to give it 10 11 11 out of 10. But the great thing for is the great idea. top marks feel this is what i call a horror film better than all this modern shit okay everybody bye like subscribe and share bye, bye. Well, now it's about time to talk about the horror films which down through the years have become classics. No, not now, Zuckman. No, one of those and I really get ugly. That's what you're going with. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>